Of the flagship Nintendo characters, perhaps none is more unique than Kirby. Created by Masahiro Sakurai, the game developer who would go on to create Super Smash Bros., Kirby first appeared in the 1992 Game Boy title, Kirby's Dream Land. With his whimsically simple design and unique ability to fight using the powers of his opponents, Kirby has become one of Nintendo's flagship characters. The Kirby series is one of the best selling of all time. 2022's Kirby and the Forgotten Land is the latest of the over 30 titles. From 2D platformers to kart racers and even a golf game, Kirby has had some of the most diverse titles in all of Nintendo's mainline series. Kirby and the Forgotten Land is surprisingly the first full 3D platformer the series has seen. A focus on copy abilities and secrets off the beaten path clearly make this game a 3D successor to one of the most well-received of these titles, Kirby Superstar. Kirby and the Forgotten Land opens on Kirby's home planet of Popstar. While Kirby is out adventuring on a sunny day, the sky suddenly darkens. What initially looks to be a bad storm turns into something much worse as a portal opens in the sky and begins to engulf bits of the environment as well as a number of Waddle Dees, the other denizens of Popstar, which are a common feature of this series. Kirby springs into action and tries to save the Waddle Dees, but ultimately succumbs to the portal as well. When the Calamity is passed, Kirby awakens in the Forgotten Land, a post-apocalyptic world being reclaimed by nature, and the Waddle Dees have been captured by an unknown enemy. This opening conveys the plot and setting well. With less than two minutes before the player takes control of Kirby, it is also impressively concise. There is, however, something missing. Like all subsequent pre-rendered cutscenes, the opening cutscene is silent save for the soundtrack. Although one can see what developer HAL Laboratory is going for with this choice, some players may find that this approach to the story ends up making it feel less impactful without hearing the characters' reactions to what's happening. Following the opening cutscene, the player enters into a short intro stage. This stage teaches the controls and conveys the necessary info for playing through the rest of the game. Kirby has standard 3D platform controls for movement, as well as controls for his unique abilities, including Kirby's floating ability and his iconic copy ability, which allows him to inhale specific enemies and absorb their powers. The copy abilities in Kirby in the Forgotten Land, while fewer in number than Kirby's Superstar, are upgradable and offer a more varied game experience than before. The intro stage also includes the first example of Kirby in the Forgotten Land's new mechanic, Mouthful Mode. In this mode, inhaling certain inorganic objects allows Kirby to take control of them. These objects include a car, vending machine, light bulb, and several others. Mouthful Mode offers a unique twist on the standard Kirby gameplay, and allows each level to further stand apart from one another. It's also very fun visually, and has lent itself to a number of memes. Stages after the intro are varied and contain several objectives. These objectives can range from saving individual Waddle Dees to defeating a boss using a specific ability. Most of these objectives aren't too difficult, but some of them will challenge the player in their mastery of the game or their desire to explore each level. There are also a number of bonus stages that will exclusively feature one ability to showcase the options that ability opens, as well as boss battles which are delightfully over the top and show some of the series' trademark wackiness and humor. Another feature is Waddle Dee Town. Waddle Dee Town is an area that acts as a hub for the player. Initially sparsely populated, the town grows as the player rescues more of the Waddle Dees and includes several shops and eventually a coliseum where Kirby can challenge bosses again as well as some exclusive enemies. This is a great reward for players who complete extra objectives, which always result in more Waddle Dees being rescued. The Forgotten Land setting is very visually appealing. Differentiating itself from other post-apocalyptic settings, the Forgotten Land is very bright and saturated. The soundtrack is fun and upbeat while retaining the ability to add a somber feel when necessary. Kirby as a series is often defined by a more lighthearted and positive tone, and the ability to bring this tone to a post-apocalyptic setting is impressive and refreshing. Returning from Kirby Superstar is the option to add a second player into the mix. Instead of playing as a friendly version of an enemy, like you would in Kirby Superstar, the second player in Kirby in the Forgotten Land takes control over Bandana Waddle Dee. While this character's moveset is more diverse than any individual copy ability, they lack the versatility and utility that the copy abilities allow. Compared to Kirby Superstar where the second player had access to the copy abilities, this is a noticeable step down, even if it is still a fun experience. Any series moving from 2D to full 3D is taking a risk. Some titles, such as Legend of Zelda or Mario, 
have excelled in this new dimension, while others, including Donkey Kong and Sonic, have had less successful transitions. Kirby and the Forgotten Land, with its fantastic new additions and clear reverence for past entries, proves that this series can function very well in full 3D and has a very bright future ahead of it. A 4 out of 5.